Father, thank you so much for the fact that uh, you are such a loving God that uh, you went over the top when you sent your son to your only son to die a horrible death in our place to bring us to heaven. Lord Jesus, we pray that now as we look into your word, you would help us to see you uh, for how you are in the scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, turn please in your Bible to Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, verse 3. 24, 3. Exodus 24, 3. <clears throat> Try to picture the scene. This is at the base of Mount Sinai. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said all that the Lord had said, will we do and be obedient? And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Now, what a day this was. This was a day of the sprinkling of blood. Moses is there, as mentioned, he's there at the the foot of Mount Sinai there. And he, and he, he sprinkles the people with the blood and he says, Behold, the blood of the covenant. What, of a, what a Passover night that was when, when, when the Lord Jesus, holding up the cup of wine, said, as was quoted to us in Luke twenty two twenty, likewise also the cup after supper, saying, the cup, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. What a removal and remission of the sins of the people we have from Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. Without the shedding of blood, there's no removal. There's no removal of sins. Like the, It's just a continuation of a growing crime sheet that demands judgment, 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 and yearns to have it all, uh, ha- have it somehow expunged from the record. Without the shedding of blood, there's no expungement from the record. What a redemption there is from 1 Peter 1.18. 1 Peter 1.18, we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Redeemed with the blood. Red- means that without the shedding of blood, there's no redemption. There's no redemption for our souls. Just that desperate state, I mean, it's hard to imagine, but the desperate state of being just another prisoner Another captive on a prison ship, bound for hell, wanting to be released from the ship, and yet hopeless to be released without the shedding of blood. What a covering we have. What an atonement we have there is from Leviticus 17.11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement, a covering for your souls. For it's the blood that makes an atonement, a covering for the soul. The blood that makes an atonement, a covering. It means that without the shedding of blood, there's no atonement. There's no covering for our sins. Just the shame and the embarrassment from the open exposure of our sin that Adam and Eve felt in the garden after they sinned. What a reconciliation that we have that comes from Ephesians 2.13. Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off, you were far off as was prayed, by Ken earlier today, we talked about that, being an enemy of God. You who were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Made nigh by the blood of Christ. It means without the shedding of blood, there's no getting near to God. Just this continuing, aching distance from God that our sins caused, as it says in Isaiah. And we want to get close to God, but our sins keep pushing us farther and farther away from God. What a cleansing we have. What a cleansing we have from 1 John 1.17. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood cleanses us from all sin. 
It means all sin, everything, all sin that we have been cleansed from through the blood. Without the shedding of blood of the Lord Jesus, there's no cleansing. There's no cleansing. Just that terrible feeling of the soul, of the dirtiness in, within, and the longing to be clean but can't. Even from the, from the evil thoughts that just spew out, the thoughts of murder, it's adultery, it's fornications, thefts, all listed as a horrible list in Matthew 15, 19. Matthew 15, 19. What a peace that we have from Colossians 1.20. Colossians 1.20, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Peace through the blood. It means without the shedding of blood, there's no peace. There's no peace with God. Just this frightful fear of being at war with God and this longing that, oh, if it could only be over, if I could only be reconciled to God. Now we see that we have, in addition to all those wonderful things through the blood, now we see that we have justification. Justification from Romans 5.9. Romans 5.9 reads, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Justified by his blood. It means that without the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus, there's no justification for us. Just that remaining, that depressing state of being in condemnation for our sins and, and the yearning, somehow could I be released from this and not feel the blame that I, that's due me for my sins? Justification, it's a legal term. It's a legal term, and there's a, there, there's a right way of thinking to see how God justifies man, and then there's a wrong way of thinking of how ju God might justify man, but he doesn't. Unfortunately, the world today sees how ju God would justify man in the wrong way. And the wrong way is to see that God justifies man based on man's good record, which is not good at all, but he thinks it's good. And that would be where man would claim that the accusations against him were all wrong. Man, man, man thinks that all the accusations against me are fake news. It's just fake news. And, but the news that, that, that man is really good and, and his life is really, really good, that's fake news. That's what God says. That's fake news. Because as we said in Romans 3.10, in Romans 3.10, as it's been said, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. And when God keeps saying that, no, not one, no, not one, it means that God hasn't found their good person yet. He hasn't found one single good person in the whole wide world. But what he does say about every person in the whole wide world is Romans 3.23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means there's not one person who hasn't sinned when it says come short of the glory of God. It means that because of sin, no man will see the glory of God. You can't make it there. I fell short. I just can't. I want to see the glory of God. I can't because it all comes short of the glory of God because of sin. And if a person says to God, a person stands and says to God, oh, wait a minute, I'll show you a good person. Mother Teresa, oh, she was a really good person. Then he's trying to make God a liar. Because God says everyone, including Mother Teresa, has, has sinned. As it says in, in 1 John 1.10, if we say, if we have the audacity to say that we have not sinned, we make him, we make God a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, the tragedy is that most people today think that they can stand on their own record. They can, they can stand and they can be, they can be get a, hear a legal verdict that says, Justified, justified, based on the record. This is what the Bible calls, calls the way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It's Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12 tells, them, tells us that the, the, the vast majority of people are marching down a road which seems right, it seems right, it seems right, and they're heading right for the cliff of hell, right down the middle of the road to hell. And the, and the terrible part about all that, it's all unnecessary. It's all, that catastrophe that catastrophe is all not necessary. There's no reason for any person to go down that catastrophic road to hell. No, because the death of the Lord Jesus Christ has put within reach salvation to every man. It's all there. All man has to do is to, is to take it. That's why this verse in Romans 3.23 is so important when it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 
So what's the right way to be justified? Just take. Just take the gift of redemption that God's giving to us. The right way to be justified is Romans 3.25. Romans 3.25, which is called through faith in his blood. You know, we're going to have a time now of communion soon. And it's a call from God to when we take that cup, to not do it mechanically, to not do it because we've done it so many times before, but really to reach forward and to say, I have faith in his blood. Faith in his blood for what? To justify me. Faith in his blood to, to redeem me. All the things we just talked about. Faith in his blood to cleanse me. Faith in his blood. That's the key for God's justification. Faith in his blood. Faith in his blood is, 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 a, is a reliance. It's a reliance. And it's all like, like saying, in the past, I relied on my own record to be justified with God, but not now. Now I have faith in his blood. I abandon trusting in myself and doing any good works and, 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 and I'm going to turn my back on the idea that, that I'm a good person and now I'm going to have faith in his blood. It's a wholehearted reliance on the blood of the Lord Jesus. Faith in his blood is a passionate grip on the Lord just like we see that Jacob did all night long when he was with God in Genesis 32, 24. In Genesis 32, 24 was a time where it says, Jacob was left alone, left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw, the man saw, when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he, the man, he touched the hollow of his, Jacob's, of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Jacob said, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, Sorry, the man said, let, let me go for the day breaketh. And he, the, Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Can you feel the passionate grip in that? I will not let thee go except thou bless me. He said unto him, what is thy name? My name is, and he said, Jacob. He said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but with Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. I mean, there was Jacob that night, left alone. He wrestled with the man. That was God. That was God. He said so. He said at the end of that, uh, th that whole episode there, he said, I saw the face of God. He named it that, Peniel. It, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, is in a wrestling match with Jacob all night long. Jacob is put into a state of incredible pain with his hip being put out of joint. And in that state, in that pain, Jacob passionately grips the Lord Jesus, the man, and says, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. In other words, Jacob was saying that you're going to have to kill me in order to, for me to release my grip. My grip is so determined that you'll have to kill me in order for him to, that's a passionate grip that caused Jacob to be rewarded with this new name of Israel. That's a picture of what it means to have faith in his blood. It's a passionate reliance on the blood of the Lord Jesus as the basis for us to receive what we've been, the, one of the things we've been talking about, is, is this gift of justification by God. And you can feel this passion. You can feel this grip in Genesis 32. You know, um, this la last, a couple weeks ago, when I was in Hawaii, and, and, and we were going to do a, a beach dive in this place there, and so the instructor there, he was explaining to me about the kind of fish that we would see down there. Is explained about dangerous fish, as a matter of fact. He says, well, when we're under the water there, I have to make some hand, hand signs to you so, so you'll know what this, that I saw this fish and you should come see this fish, okay? So he said, this one means lionfish. He said, that's lionfish. And lionfish have very poisonous um, uh, spikes. And then he said, and this one means puffer fish, puffer fish. So, you know, they're not so dangerous unless you eat their liver, then you die instantly. It's a puffer fish. And then he said, and this one means more eel. So like that, see? So, and, and, I, and I wondered, well, why didn't he say what shark was? You know, shark was this one or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it, but anyway, he said more eel. You know, there's a more eel. And, you know, what I, fear, what I feared most uh, in there, more than sharks, is, is, is the more eel. I, I, because, I, because I was told when I was certified that in Catalina that if you put your hand where the moray eel is, 
it, it, it'll bite, and it locks his jaw. And on the diving boat that we're on in, in Catalina, they, they, they said, now, now <clears throat> um, he brought out this big, huge pair of pliers and screwdriver, and he said, now you'll have to swim to the surface here, and the moral eel will be locked on to you, and we'll have to, break, we'll have to kill him and break his jaw. <laughs> to get out, so I was just petrified to die like this, you know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so so anyway, so Jacob was like the moray eel. He was like the moray eel with God, where the only way to get the moray eel off was was to to get him lose his to stop his grip, his locked jaw was to kill him. And that's what Jacob had. That that's what Jacob had on God. He had the moray eel grip. On God, when he said in Genesis 32, 26, Genesis 32, 26, he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. That's the more eel grip. That's the grip. And, 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 um, and you know, and, and uh, it, it reminds me one time when I was, when I was talking to a person who, and I really kind of doubted whether that person was saved, really was saved, when that person referred to God and salvation in the Lord Jesus, he just, they, that person said, it's all that religious stuff, all that religious stuff. Well, faith in his blood is a passionate grip where it's not all that religious stuff, but it's a passionate appreciation for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and what his blood has accomplished, all those things were listed in the beginning here, but especially now as we're focusing on justification from our sins. But our verse in, in, in Romans 5, 9, it says, Romans 5, 9 says, much more being justified by his blood. When it says much more than, that forces us to look at this verse above it to see that, that what, what was the much more in reference to, and that's Romans 5, 8, Romans 5, 8, the verse above it, where it says, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his unbelievable love to us in that the Lord Jesus died for us while, as Ken prayed, we were his enemies. He, he died for us. Just think of that. We were in a state of war with God. We were being the enemies of God. And God showed the greatest love to us by having the Lord Jesus die for our sins in that state. That is describing the greatest op obstacle that there was uh, to God saving us is the fact that we were enemies with God. We were enemies with God. And God abounded. He jumped over that obstacle to save us uh, of being enemies with God when he sent the Lord Jesus to die for our sins. Now, if the Lord Jesus died for us when we were enemies, now when we stand, now we are not as enemies, but we stand in need to be justified much more God overcame the, the, the obstacle of our sins to save us, to justify us by this blood. Now, we all know in ourselves, if we're really honest, we'll all know in ourselves, in our heart of hearts, that, that we're, 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 we are not just the garden variety of sinners. We are another type of sinners. We are the dirty, rotten sinners, another type, dirty, rotten. So, so if we're really honest, and we have a question, we look at ourselves, we see ourselves in that state, how could God do that? How could God justify us? So it's really important for us to know how God can justify the dirty, rotten sinners, not just the good sinners or the uh, other kind, which don't exist. Anyway, how, how was God able to justify sinners? Now just think uh, of, of how God the Father so loved God the Son. It's really important to see that, of how much the Father loved the Son. I'm, and, and, and we're told that the shed blood of Abel cried from the ground in the ears of God. We're told that in Genesis 4.10. Genesis 4.10 says, he said, God says to Cain, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. See, after Cain had killed Abel, God said that he heard the voice of, of, of Abel's blood. It wasn't just speaking to God from the ground. It was crying to God from the ground. Now, now can't, you just, can't you just picture now God listening to the blood of Abel, is, is, of crying to him from the ground. The blood of Abel is on the ground. It's crying to God. And, 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 and now again, think of the love that God the Father had for God the Son. And now, now just imagine that God is now looking and he's listening to the blood of the Lord Jesus crying to him from the ground of Calvary. 
be, 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 just what the song that the, the girl sang earlier, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all at, the, at Calvary. He paid it all on the cross. And, that, and the blood, his blood was on the ground, like a hymn says, and from the ground there blossoms red life that shall ever be. So here's the blood of the Lord Jesus crying from the ground below the cross, crying in the ears of God. And can't you just imagine God the Father with all of his focus, intent on the blood of the one who he delighted in for all eternity. And can't you just imagine how the blood of the Lord Jesus is crying to God. And, you know, the, the, the blood of Abel, you know, who was crying? It was crying, vengeance, justice, avenge my blood. That was the blood of Abel. But on the other hand, the blood of Jesus, it's not crying vengeance because he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It's not crying vengeance. But what the blood of the Lord Jesus is crying is, forgive them. I died for them. Forgive them. I died for them. Uh, or as the hymn says, nor let that, uh, that, that sinner die. And now imagine how God the Father is all focused now on the blood of the Lord Jesus, and now you and I also set our passionate grip, our passionate more eel reliance on the blood of the Lord Jesus, just as passionate as the Father was focused on hearing the voice of the blood of the Lord Jesus, you and I are now passionately more eel grip. Uh, 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 reliance and faith on the blood of the Lord Jesus. And when we do, when we do that, we find ourselves shoulder to shoulder with God the Father. We're both looking at the same thing. We're both enthralled with the same person, the Lord Jesus, and he's right on the side of us, and we're both focused on the blood of the Lord Jesus. Just imagine, just imagine that. And then, and, 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 and imagine, imagine as, you're, as, you're, as, you're, as that scene, and then imagine another voice, Another voice coming out of who knows where, and it starts to list all of our sins. And, you know, it, it, it starts to list all we do. That voice is accusing. It's good. That voice comes from the accuser of the brethren, and listing all of it. And so God is hearing one voice over here, the accuser of the brethren, and he's listing out all of our sins, and God is now hearing another voice from the blood of the Lord Jesus is saying, yes, but forgive him. Yes, but forgive him. And so what does God do? much more justified by his blood, justify him. He turns and says, he took, God the Father turns and says to us and says, justify him. He's put his faith, his passionate grip reliance, his moraeal grip in the blood of my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's how we can understand how, how the Father could justify us in spite of all of our sins. Let's take these thoughts as we go now to the table to worship the Lord for, for what he did for us. Let's pray. Father, help us now as we turn to you now through the elements to appreciate what you've done. Give us, Lord, the, 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 the strength to put the passionate reliance, the passionate grip reliance in faith in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen.